Greetings everyone, Irish Trekkie back with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review. We have issue 143 of The Merchant Man. And I know this ship has been banging around in people's heads since the very early days of the collection. And here she is, Star Trek 3's Merchant Man. You know, the... It's the Merchant Man, what can I say? <laughs> so we're going to have a look at the ship shortly, but we're going to have a look at the magazine first. And while you're here, listen, I want to say thanks for stopping by, checking out the review. Okay, and uh, don't forget, I have the other 142 reviewed, so check out that playlist. All the links are in the doobly-doo down below and on the channel anyway. Okay, and um, check out the Discovery Collection and all the other Eagle Moss uh, ships that I've done as well. Um, but anyway, back to business. Let's put this to one side, which looks like a beaut of a ship. But let's see what goodies lay inside the magazine, shall we? So, type freighter launched 23rd century, length 150 meters, with a max speed of warp 5. Nice graphic there as well, actually. So we have four sections. Uh, magazine's a little bit crumpled, but sometimes you get that. Um, we have uh, about the merchant man designing the ship, Star Trek 3's visual effects and on-screen appearances. So, this is an independent ship. It's a freighter. And um, it does have phasers. And we've seen three people on it. So let's put down three crew. Um, here we have some close-ups of the engine module. And some of the nice greebling and detailing there as well. And uh, again, nice ventral section on the bottom of that ship for sure. Ooh, look at that. Look at that lovely shot of the Merchant Man there. So, uh, by 2285, the Merchant Man had seen better days and its rust red exterior looked in urgent need of some uh, delicate care and maintenance. Uh, it was obviously a well used freighter whose crew of uh, miscreants, oh, that's a bit harsh, were prepared to take on assignments of dubious legality. So, here's some of the miscreants down here. So, um, uh, Valkyris, yeah, that was the Klingon operative, directed the captain and the helmsman uh, of the merchantman uh, to the prearranged meeting point of Commander Krug's Bird of Prey. She had hired the rogue crew to steal data regarding the Genesis device, but instead of being paid for their efforts, they were re rewarded with a volley of disruptor fire. Yes, you know, it came out in the interaction that they'd seen the data, and uh, Mr. Krug... He just couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't handle that. He couldn't process that information like a mature adult. He did it like a, any Klingon would. And a uh, volley of torpedoes to the face, no less. And the merchant man uh, met its untimely demise. Um, again, impulse, warp, nacelle, configuration at the back. Um, forward weapon port at the front. You have your reactor parts, bridge module. Uh, and the you know, nice thing about the bridge, it kind of looks like uh, the top of Federation ship as well. So you're going to see that kind of symbiosis uh, when it comes to design. You know, oh, that's an effective and efficient design. Let's put that on this ship and uh, vice versa. So pretty cool. Um, I definitely dig that. And um, Nilo Rodas, yeah, he was the designer of the Merchant Man as well. So um, yeah, loads of goodies. Oh, I do love some um, concept art as well. So here's some early concept art. Again, detail off the front view there as well. Here we see um, Merchant Man model at D-Space 9, TNG. So again, reduce, reuse, recycle. Why not if it's an effective design? Um, now I had a little bit of a sneak peek. I'm not going to lie. So there's a nice thing about this ship being designed to be fodder for the Klingon, so it was designed to be forgettable. But do you know what? It turned out to be quite a fan favourite. A lot of nice little detailing in there, so I'm not going to uh, spoil that. Equally, I sometimes lambast the extra content in here, but I'm going to give it a pass because it's about the visual effects uh, rather than, you know, the overall season or the overall movie and stuff like that. Um, so you have, again, the maquettes of uh, what Earth Space Dock would uh, potentially look like. Um, from ILM as well, so study models for the director, Mr. Nimoy, and um, some interesting uh, tricks that they used for filming, and here we have Bill George uh, making the fantastic bird of prey, um, even on the puppetry used for the creature that went after Kirk, 
and uh, again the destruction of the uh, enterprise as well so again doing this kind of like lightly skinned version uh, with acetone being dropped down to dissolve it and then layering up burning wool and stuff like that uh, to uh, deliver a cons uh, composite uh, VFX shot as well fantastic um, I just love that kind of extra insight and obviously we have a tag here with uh, again another gross puppet uh, with glued on hair as well and um, some fantastic information there so I'm sure everyone's going to like that and uh, again some uh, information on the Merchant Man, so Star Trek 3, Search for Spock was its debut, and again, it was reused several times over. So, that concludes our magazine. I did kind of breeze through that, because there's some nice juicy bits of information in there. Um, if the video quality is sufficient, and I know some of the pages are crinkly, so it could be kind of washed out with some of the creases, pause the screen and read it if you want as well, but um, I don't want to um, spoil anything unnecessarily for you guys. Uh, guys and gals watching this video, um, straight up, number 144, we have uh, Gum 2. Okay, so interesting, interesting shape. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reserve judgment uh, on this, um, again, very seam, a uh, visible seam here as well. So, um, yes, this uh, living intelligent vessel that depends on a symbiotic relationship with its crew. Interesting episode, though. Will we see an interesting um, model? That begs the question. Anyway, let's check out the ship, shall we? Merchant man, merchant man. Here is the merchant man. Okay, so don't break it. Come on, Damien, don't break it. Um, we'll have a look at the... <gasps> Do you know? Oh, no, there it is. I was like, oh, my God, the stand is missing. But it's over here, so get yourself together. Get yourself together. Okay. Um, straight up, this looks freaking amazing. Um, let's have a look at the sculpt first, and then we'll have a look at the paint applications. But, um, yeah, sculpt-wise, there is a lot of detailing, a lot of paneling effect here, um, with some nice breaks from the design. Uh, you can see your you have your weapons uh, port there, coming up into the bridge section, all that lovely greebling down the back, exposed paneling. For easy maintenance, um, which makes sense. Um, engine detailing is nice. You have plastic inserts in there as well to accent that, which is very cool. Um, all that kind of nice greebling and detailing from the spine of the ship is continued on both the port and starboard side. And with a, a massive amount of detailing um, on the ventral side as well. Um, I like these little modules. They're kind of like almost reverse thrusters or something like that, you know? Maybe atmospheric engines and so on and so forth. And you have this kind of very pronounced uh, ventral fin in here as well, which is kind of reverse. So you have a kind of asymmetric uh, design almost to it. Um, I feel like things are squidging in my head. Oh yeah, they're these things. So there's little, I'm not going to move it there, but you can see that little wiggly thing there. Yes, that's a technical term, wiggly. Um, the sculpt on this is fantastic. Um, it's up there with uh, some of the best models, actually, on the sculpt side of things. I think it's very, very well done. And what really kind of jumps out to me, and I know we, I said we were going to talk about it anyway, is the paint application. So you have a very nice blend of colours, as you can see here, um, across to kind of accentuate some of the panels over the others. But then you have your uh, exposed components, and then there's like a kind of like a silver kind of wash in certain areas and a dark wash in other areas as well and you can kind of see hints of gold and silver and black just to kind of again if that was monotone and even not as kind of glossy uh, the detail would just be gone on it for sure but um that dances very very nicely and even these little slender uh wing cast offs here as well paint app is very neat very tidy on it and they are pretty much aligned in there pretty well as well. Bridge module's cool. You can kind of see that difference in the, the kind of paint app here between the top of this section versus the side walls. The light just catches it very, very nice. And even down on these kind of grids, grills, whatever you would call them. Um, look very cool. 
Great addition to the inserts here for the engine as well. And you can kind of see some geometry just inside those four engines too. And then you can see some of the more of these nozzles here as well, which is very nice. I really like it. It's really done justice to the merchant, man. I, I will give it that. Um, now, I had this kind of set under quite a stark light here. Um, but still, I think it's very, very good. Um, again, top marks for sculpts. I think top marks for paint application as well. Eagle Moss did a fantastic job on the merchant, man. And you have that kind of iconic profile and just you know again it was so great to see it even though it was designed to be not remembered um for a ship that was designed in that with that kind of methodology and purpose in mind uh it has sure stood the test of time um i'm curious to know what you folks think off the ship is it, is it a win is it a fail is it something that you've been looking forward to or is it just something that you're going to like you see in the shops and maybe kind of what buy it not on your radar at all. Um, let's see what it's like on stand. And let's compare to a ship in the line. And uh, we'll get a sense uh, of scale of the ship as well. So we're going to put it on the stand here. So just let you know, I have 59, 59, A slash A. Nice, uh, nice number combination there. So this should just slide over here. So this is centrally mounted. Um, I don't think it's going to, it's not going to, it's not in there tight. Um, it's not tight at all, but I don't think it's going to risk falling off unless you put it at quite a severe angle. Maybe the, the no, the back fin's not going to help you out there at all. But, um, again, I don't, I couldn't have seen another way to maybe mount this more securely. Um, if the tolerance was decreased on here, maybe it'd be just too tight and mark the model itself. So I know a lot of thought goes into these, um, stands. But it's nice to see it taking advantage of this ventral fin down here and um, still kind of showing it off quite neatly. But as you can see, it does encompass that stand very well. So it's not unbalanced in any sort of manner. So, uh, yeah, let's get a sense of scale and compare it to another ship in the line, shall we? OK, here we go. We have the bird of prey. Of course, of course, these two had to face down. Now, the scaling is not right at all between these two, but um, there's three variations of this bird of prey, so I'm sure most of you watching will probably have one of them. So you can just see how nice the size is of the Merchantman as well. But, um, you know, it's, it's the hell, you know, I, I just another great comp. Uh, what's the, I'm losing words here. My faculties are, are letting me down. Um, another great addition to the collection for sure. And um, yeah. Again, I think this is a home run by Eagle Moss, so well done, everyone involved, and um, good show. But anyway, um, I'll leave all the details down below for Eagle Moss and all the links for uh, social media land that you can find me out. But uh, as always, listen, thanks for stopping by and checking out um, these little ramblings uh, reviews that I do. And um, let me know in the comments. Say hi. And uh, don't forget, you can support the channel as well if you're so inclined through Patreon. Again, all the links are in the doobly-doo. And uh, check out some of my other videos as well. And have a great rest of the week, folks. And I will see you in the next one. And spoiler alert, Space Doc's on the way. Uh, Bonaventure is on the way. And my Star Trek Beyond Enterprise, which I kind of forgot about, is on the way as well. So there is going to be some uh, reviews coming up. And uh, hopefully um, you'll find some mild entertainment on them as well. I've been your local Irish Trekkie. And I will see you in the next video. So take it easy and goodbye.